wanted to put together kind of an informative video about water hunting. That's just going to show you the kind of the why, the what, the how, the where, the when uh, of water detecting. Uh, just some t tips and strategies and, and some maybe some secrets, you know, some pointers that I could give you that might help you to get on some great treasures. It's uh, it's all about strategies, tips, it's all about research, it's all about doing these things. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that and see if I could help you out to get you on some sites. Hopefully there may be some stuff in here that you can draw from it. So without any further delay, let me get into all this. So let me talk to you first about the what of water hunting. What is water hunting? Uh, there's all types of water hunting, but what I'm talking about is mainly water hunting in the lakes, in the designated swimming areas or outside the swimming areas or something like that. But anyway, that's the what of water hunting when I talk about water hunting, detecting in the lakes around your area. Uh, the why of water hunting, I went on one lake that uh, I got six rings off of, went to another lake, got nine rings off of, went to another lake, got 10 rings off of, Went to one lake, got 12 rings in one day. Uh, went to one and got nine rings. So there's a lot of rings out there. You just have to find out where to go and, and, and when to get them. But that's why we do water hunting. Uh, this is just the rings that we're talking about. I found tons of uh, silver bracelets, gold bracelets, uh, gold earrings, silver earrings, and, and all kinds of stuff. I couldn't tell you how much clad change that I got through all of this as well. So there's a lot out there, but the real treasures are those rings, especially those gold rings with stones in them, some little little ice in those stones or some type of precious jewel. Uh, but that's why uh, you should do some water hunting. It's a little bit different than land hunting. It takes a little bit to get your legs underneath you and learn how to scoop and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, getting into that, let me tell you the how of water hunting. Uh, you need the right equipment. You know, first of all, you're going to need a water detector, something like an AT Pro or a, a Mine Lab. That you know, any type of brand that you're, is your per, personal preference, but uh, that it has to be waterproof because a lot of the rings are going, going to be out there between, uh, probably in my experience, from waist deep to chest deep. Uh, they're going to be anywhere from ankle deep all the way out to chin deep, but the average is going to be around the waist deep parts where most of that's going to be. But you need a good waterproof detector, something with a quick return. You don't need a real sophisticated detector. You're not really detecting down deep. You're just really just underneath the surface is what you're looking for. And I hunt personally with the AT Pro. I have the Max, uh, AT Max. I have also the CTX 3030. But the AT Pro is just, to me, a great water detector. Uh, of course, I've got the amphibian headphones that go with it. Uh, you need some of those. You can hunt without uh, waterproof headphones, but just don't drop them in the water. Uh, I've done that my first two years of water detecting, but I've got the uh, Detector Pro uh, Grey Ghost headphones, and they're great. You'll need a waterproof pinpointer. You don't use it that much, but in the shallow water, sometimes it's just easier just to get a signal bend down with the pinpointer and, and get it rather than trying to scoop it. You'll need a good pouch, a pouch that's going to drain the water out, a pouch that you can put your trash in, and one that you can put your, your treasures in as well. And I think probably the most key thing outside the detector is going to be a good scoop, a good sturdy handle scoop that's going to have some good holes in it that's going to drain away the water real quick in the mud and, and, the, and the, the pebbles or whatever that might be, you know, the type of base that your, your swimming hole is going to be. And you need to check some of your lakes that you go to because some scoops that are larger than six inches are actually not allowed, but a lot of people do it anyway. And no one, I don't think, is ever going to say anything, but someone could if you had a larger scoop on that. Now, that doesn't apply in the beach or in the rivers or anything like that, but mainly in some of these Corps of Engineer lakes, you'll just have to know what the law states on some of that. Uh, sometimes a lot of people make a basket out of PVC pipe with a netting on it, and they dump it into that. Um, I have one, but I found that it's just more of a hassle, something else I got to carry. I just shake everything out in my scoop and put it in my pouch and I go on and that way I don't have a lot of stuff to carry down to the lake because sometimes you have to park way away and walk down there. But sometimes a basket is really good uh, when you're uh, in some clay and you need to dump the clay out and, and kind of go through it. Uh, but if it's just sand or pea gravel or something like that that's going to sift through your scoop real quick, uh, you don't really need a basket. But that's just up to your personal preference. And so that's kind of the, the how of water hunting. You're going to have to have the right equipment to really do it. 
If you don't have a waterproof detector, that's okay. You can go out to the housing. Just don't get the housing down and stay up on the beach and kind of do some of the beach area. I found some good rings on the beach. I normally don't hunt that, but, uh, but sometimes I do. Um, so another question is the where of water detecting. Where can you water detect? Where are some of these lakes uh, that I hunt at? And what I did, I just got on Google Earth, brought up the map, and just began to look at all the lakes. And I just uh, began to zoom in, find all the swimming areas. I began to star all those swimming areas. That way when I travel, I can pick out my lakes and I can travel to my point of destination, hunt lakes going there and hunt lakes coming back. It's just easy. I don't have to try to remember where they are. I know the lakes that are hit a lot and kind of stay away from them because uh, it's kind of frustrating to go there and hunt all day and not get anything. That's frustrating. You don't want to do that. So you got to do your research. You know, get out there and find these lakes where there's not a lot of people that don't know where they are. And that sometimes that involves a little bit of traveling as well. But where you can hunt in lakes? Well, you can hunt in city lakes. And usually, usually city lakes are pretty good about letting you go out there. But on any lake, I would first call and verify that it's okay to metal detect out there. Especially if you're in a, uh, an artifact area of Indian artifacts or something like that, you gotta be real careful on some of that. Uh, county lakes are really good about letting you go out and do metal detecting. Uh, anything across the nation, the Corps of Engineer lakes, uh, most of them, I would say 95% of them, the law states that you can do it, but there's some rules and regulations there that you need to, to look at. But some Corps of Engineer lakes may not, depending on if they're in a historical area or not. So it's up to you to call them and make sure. Because if you're out there, they're going to come out there and get on to you and tell you to get out of there and whatever. But but uh, if you're like me, I don't like to, I don't like that. You know, I rather know before I'm going in there. So I always make a phone call or stop at the project office and ask the question: uh, Is it okay? Um, state parks. Now, if you live in Texas or if you're around surrounding Texas and you want to come here to lake hunt in a state park, uh, that's a big no-no. You don't want to do that. You'll probably get arrested, get fined, and lose your detector on that. They're pretty strict strict around Texas on state parks. Uh, you don't want to do that. But there's other states. Check out your local state on where you can detect in these state parks. Some of them will, will just require a day-use permit. You can go in and just get a day-use permit, and they'll let you go into the swimming area as long as it's not a, a busy time of the season. Uh, you know, there's a, the, the pool is fully crowded and things like that. But if it's an off day through the week or an off week, uh, off season or something like that, uh, some of these state parks will let you detect. Uh, other state parks, uh, they close it off completely through the summer until the day after Labor Day. And so the day after Labor Day, all the way up to the weekend preceding uh, the next year's Memorial Day is open. And you can go in there, and usually the water is still okay. I know down south it is, uh, down here in Texas and Oklahoma and Arkansas and Louisiana. You can still get in these lakes, um, and it's not too cold. Now, when you get out, it may be a little chilly, but uh, right now it's still warm enough in Texas to, to water hunt. But you can get in those state parks. So you just need to look at your state, look at uh, what the rules are, the laws are, and abide by them. Uh, another great resource to check into is in your area is any private resort, uh, resort lake. Uh, I hit a couple of those this year and got permission to do so. Uh, on an off day when it wasn't busy and I ended up taking like ten dollars worth of quarters necklaces and about six different rings out of that uh, in fact there was a video that I made called boom or bust one of my earlier videos and uh, you can go back and watch that and see that episode uh, and so but that's a good resource as well and then private lakes uh, private lakes meaning summer camps things like that church retreat areas um, those are good areas as well. You know, being a pastor and knowing some uh, church summer camps and uh, different uh, uh, retreat areas and stuff like that, I've been able to get on and, and no one hunts those because they're closed off in private. So city lakes, county lakes, Corps of Engineer lakes, state parks, find out which one and when you can, private resort lakes, and also private lakes. Um, uh, different hunting clubs might let you do that as well. That's where you can water hunt. Uh, around and, and check those out. There's wherever people are swimming, there's going to be uh, rings to be found. Now you can hunt also in the rivers that where people gather up and just swim in these rivers. That's a good place as well. But uh, find the old designated swimming areas, find the old swimming areas on the lakes and uh, go in those areas 
and I guarantee you, you're going to find your fill of some great rings. I have a little strategy. I take the state of Texas and I pinpoint on the map every single club, metal detecting club that's in Texas. And I draw a circle within two hours of driving time either way of that club. And I see how on this map how all these circles will overlap. And, uh, and then I try to find lakes that are out from there, you know, because you have to be a diehard person like myself uh, to drive three hours to go to a lake. Uh, most people just won't do that. Uh, but uh, some of us do, and they pay off. And, and that's what I do. I try to stay away from where I know there's a lot of honey going on. In my area, just within 45 minutes uh, to an hour, there's probably six or seven lakes in my area. Uh, and probably uh, out of those lakes, probably about 10 or 12 swimming areas. But I'm also within 30 miles of three different metal detecting clubs that, that consist of about 35, 40 members, and a lot of them are uh, water detectors. And they pound these East Texas lakes over and over and over again. There's people that come out of town to these lakes as well. And so I just got where I just don't hunt in my area anymore. There's just no more rings around here. And uh, so I had to do research to get outside, get further away uh, from that. Um, in the swimming area, when you get into that swimming area, where are those rings going to be? Well, in my experience, over the last two years, I've been kind of doing my own little research on this. 85% of all the rings that you find are going to be in the very heart of that designated swimming area. Now, about 10% of those rings are going to be on the outside edges. Now, within the barrier, okay, some, some swimming areas and some uh, parks will not let you go outside those barriers. You have to find out about that. But about 10% are on those edges, and about 5%, uh, okay, are outside that swim area. And just make sure that you're uh, eligible to go outside the swim area. If you're on a Corps of Engineer Lake, you're not allowed to go outside the barrier. You have to stay within that and uh, state parks as well. You want to stay inside that designated area. And, uh, and so that's where they are. So at the heart of the swimming area, right in the middle, that's where 85% of all your rings are going to be. Now, are they going to be shallow? Are they going to be deeper? That just depends on the lake. But in my experience, most um, rings that I have found are going to be about waist deep. That's, that's kind of where they are. And, uh, but to put it kind of into some uh, statistical form, from the water's edge as you walk in to mid-thigh, I would say about 10% of the rings are going to be found right there. From mid-thigh to about chest deep, uh, I would say two to four foot of water, that's 80% of your rings are going to be found in that area. That's where they're playing, that's where they're running, that's where the rings are flying off. And I would say about a four to five and a half foot of water uh, about 5% of your rings are going to be from chest deep to about chin deep. And, um, and then about 5% of that is going to be up on the beach. Um, I don't really hunt the beaches that much, but I know there's some rings up there uh, to be found. And so you know where to go hunt now. You know how to get in there. You know to read the laws. And you know where in that swimming area where you should start. So what I normally do is I get to one side. I wade out to about waist deep and I'll start working the middle of that lake really really good and then I work deep and then I come back up and work shallow side to side far as I can go and sometimes different directions and you'll I guarantee you you'll get your fill of rings now we've answered a lot of those questions let me give you one more what about the wind of water detecting now that's very important uh, do you want to hunt in the mornings do you want to hunt in midday do you want to hunt in late evenings do you want to hunt on the holidays or the weekends? What day is the best day to go water hunting? Uh, well, different areas, that's going to be different for different uh, regions in our country. But in for my experience, uh, I've had the greatest success on probably Mondays and probably Thursdays and Fridays uh, before the weekend. Uh, my biggest days of water hunting to get getting the best rings is always uh, three days mainly. Um, that's going to be Memorial Day on Memorial Day, uh, the 4th of July, the de next day after the 4th of July. And then the best day that I've had a lot of times is on Labor Day and the, and the day after Labor Day. Uh, that's the kind of three main areas, uh, three times that the lakes are really full. And so you want to hit those areas. Um, and so... 
it's in between those days that you want to just hunt whenever you can and get out on those lakes. But really, it's all about timing. It's all about getting out there and, and, and getting on the, the, the targets first is all it is. Uh, that's just some pointers and that's some tips that I do in my water hunting. Uh, it's paid off for me. It's been great successful. I hope some of this information will be helpful for you. Uh, feel free to comment down in the section below and, and ask me any questions. And, and uh, there's some more pointers and tips, but I can't give you everything. There's one thing that's really the secret that, that makes me find some good rings, but I can't give that away because then you're going to get all the rings and I won't. But anyway, maybe, maybe if I get enough likes and comments, I might share with you that uh, little bit of tidbit, which is very simple, but I'm telling you, it really, really works. So I hope this has really helped you on the who, what, where, when, how, why of water detecting. Remember, those rings are great treasures, but they're not the greatest treasure. The tra greatest treasure, my friend, can't be found in any lake. It can only be found in heaven. So keep looking up, keep searching, and uh, until next time, God bless.